Okay, so we right here at Bryson, wide stance, very weak left hand grip, but it's very tall, both arms are almost straight, that right arm is almost straight, out of dress. We don't know the intent of Bryson's swing, but we, do, we, we can look at it and see where he's loading the club to find out where he's getting his power from. We'll notice here at the, uh, on the takeaway, look how wide the takeaway is. The club, left arm and the club are still forming almost 180 degrees, 175 degrees, almost a straight line. And one of the things about long hitters is, it's one thing about when they cock their wrists. And of course, we know that when you chip, you break your wrist early. When you hit your irons, you break your wrist somewhere halfway back. And the really long hitters assemble their club very late. Assemble meaning I'm gonna cock the wrist into position. So here we are, three quarters of the way back. Bryson still has not assembled his wrist action yet. So he is just going wide as possible. And one of the things I think when he did his workout regime, <clears throat> this would take a tremendous amount of strength to hold that club. Here we are, his shoulders are turned. I don't know, maybe 100 degrees behind the ball. He's almost ready to assemble it. He's all at the top of his swing. Some guys on the tour, they're already coming down right now. He's still going up. And there it is. He finally sets the left wrist at the top. And that's where, that's his top position. So he assembled his backswing almost right at the top of his swing. All the shortest hitters have an early wrist set, medium hitters, halfway back, and the longest hitters have what we call a snap load, which is all the way to the top. And I've never seen anyone higher than that. Now the interesting thing here is if you slow the camera down, you'll see that the right side is going back still, right hip, right obliques right shoulder are going back and before he sets the wrist at the top the left side is already moving forward what this is all about this is to capture all that late wrist wrist set at the top and you know when you think about really long hitters they're usually long hitters that are trying to be golfers and bryson's a golfer that's i suppose is now becoming a really long hitter. So he has this incredible change of directions. And that's where he captures all of that late snap load. And you'll see here as he comes down, you see the player behind him. We'll show that frame a couple times there from the top of the swing where it's just about to get to the top, but the left side has already started to go the other direction, captures all that. You'll notice here the tour player behind him, Bryson's moving to the left and watch these hands, they don't move, they sit, they sit, they haven't moved. So he's waiting for that burst of energy that whenever long hitters hold that angle late, now we saw on the way back we were almost 180 degrees, now he's down, oh I think that that angle between the left arm and the shaft probably 40, 40 degrees, tremendous amount of lag. You can see the right elbow under the left. But the main thing to notice here is that the shoulders are over the top of the hips or over the top of the knees. So this is where he needs the burst of speed right here. Once you get yourself into this, what we call the stack position, then you can move your hips as fast as you want. Now he is playing with a 5.5 degree driver that's 45 and a half inches long. So he's going to have to hit up on this. So how's he going to hit up on it? He's going to get some side tilt. You notice here from position five down to six, he's put in about 15 to 20 degrees of side tilt in his spine. You notice these long hitters, they don't have a ton of lag late. They have a big wide wind up. They grab it all at the top and then they have this burst of speed and change directions from the club head, one end of the club head to the other. Very ballistic motion. And there it is right there, there's impact. 
got a nice line of compression. The back of the left wrist is flat all the way down the shaft from the top of his shoulder all the way through the club head, about three inches past impact, it's still straight. That represents a good straight line of compression. Then up and around. Seems like it's over at that point and he just lets his right shoulder rise up over it. So it's, it doesn't surprise me with Bryson's background of golf machine. You know, long hitters, you know, speed clubs and all that. I've never seen any of that work. This is like building a rocket. You have to have some math. So what we're seeing here is this tremendously late wrist cock on the way back, and then that incredible change of directions that gathers all that speed. And then he's able to uppercut that ball it's just an incredible amount of athleticism, strength. If you're wondering how strong you have to be to take the driver all the way to the top of the swing without cocking it, go out and give it a go. And I think the bulking upside for him I saw some of his workouts. There's a lot of rotational stuff, a lot of flexibility stuff. I don't think it was just bench presses. This is all has a reason. Bryson's a smart guy, and he did everything with a purpose. And I wouldn't be surprised if the reason he can do this is he can hold these angles. He can actually support these angles with the correct muscle groups. I think that's how deep he goes on this. Incredible stuff.